Today on Commander Replay, I take my first serious look at Gisela Blade of Gold Knight and find out what happens when our opponents feed the flames. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, in addition to my TCG affiliate player link, I now have an affiliate link with Flipside Gaming, an LGS from my hometown. You can use the promo code REPLAY to save 10% on your next order over $10. Both affiliate links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Gisela Blade of Gold Knight today. And we are testing out some of the M21 toys. Gisela got a lot of really cool stuff in M21. A lot of red creatures, a lot of red cards that care about burning stuff. You got Mangara to draw some extra cards. Gisela picked up quite a bit. Take a look at this opening hand. We've got three lands, seems okay. We've got a Scab Clan Berserker. Repercussion Chandras are like kind of later game plays, but I think we can make it all work, so we'll keep. Uh, there's a Nekusar deck at the table. Gisela is actually pretty good for Nekusar just because we can negate all that damage to zero. That sounds nice. K and T should help us out a little bit with the lands. Yeah, okay. Also, Nekusar with the wheels can get us into some extra cards, which could be really, really helpful. Wouldn't mind to catch a little mana ramp off the top. There's another land. Lands are good. Want to keep making those land drops. Let's get the temple into play since it does come in tapped. Take a look. Maybe scry our way into some mana ramp. Uh, Authority of the Consoles is cool. We'll keep that right on top. Gives us something to do early also, uh, potentially before the wheels start happening. So I do like that. Also good for keeping down the blockers. What will be not great is if we get all these cool things wheeled out of our hand, that will not be super exciting. There's a library of Lang for Nekusar. Yep, we definitely looking at a wheels deck. Get everything out of our hand as fast as possible. There's the authority of the consoles. Let's get that into play. Do I think they're going to wheel on three? I don't think they would wheel on three. Uh, I'll just go for the clifftop retreat. I don't think it matters too much what we do right here with the lands. I want to take a peek. See if I got Mistvale vale Plains into the deck. I'm not sure if I did or if I didn't. It's in the deck. Yeah, maybe we should have went for that. Probably should have. Is that a Tavern Swindler? Oh man, this card's so fun. I used to play this card in Limited, and, uh, you know, not that it was, like, super impactful for winning games, but, like, it's just fun to sit there and keep tapping it and uh, hoping for the best. <laughs> we do gain a life off of the authority of the consoles. It does come in tapped. So, let's take a look at what Gisela does. By the way, I've never actually played Gisela on the channel. I really haven't played that much Gisela in any capacity. I tried it a couple times a long, long time ago, but I am so much of a better deck builder now. Flying, first strike, 5-5, five, five, 7 mana. If a source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent they control, it deals double that damage. And if a source would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent half that damage rounded up. You know, the damage doubling is great. Honestly, the damage prevention ability, I think, is really where it's at on Gisela. That damage having is so good. Like, I've survived Avenger of Zendikar attacks or not been attacked by Avenger of Zendikar because there's just no incentive to attack into you when you lose that much damage. Plus, Gisela itself is a 5-5 five -five with first strike, so it generally kills most things that might attack you. Uh, it's just so, so good. It's the Boros Praetor. Like, it is on the power level of Praetors. If you see one in play, you need to get rid of it. It is unbelievably strong. Right here, let's go for the... Yeah, let's get the Battlefield Forge. Just make sure we have all of our double mana. I'm going to get the Scab Clan Berserker in. And this is going to punish opponents for casting spells. We're going to swing over to the Nekusar, because that's usually what you have to do. We're going to hit, it's going to become Renowned, and so I love this card. Uh, three mana haste, Renowned one. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, if Scab Clan Berserker is Renowned, it deals two damage to that player. So if Giselle is in play, obviously that's going to get doubled. But even by itself, people just cast non-creature spells. Here's one right now. There's a Read the Bones. Uh, that Read the Bones costs opponent two life. Now it's going to be four. It just keeps people from having high life totals and trying to do too much. Uh, any sort of casting... 10 or 20 spells a turn is going to be out of the question. Uh, just really cool card that I need to run more than I do. It was a while ago. I, it had to be a few years back, probably four or five years ago. I saw an MTG Goldfish somewhere. There was like a vintage deck where the entire deck was getting Scab Clan Berserker into play on turn one and hitting with it because all the vintage combo decks can't play 20 spells to combo off uh, when there's a Scab Clan Berserker in play. That's renowned. So it was a pretty cool deck. It had some other stuff too. It was like a mono red prison kind of deck. I don't know that much about vintage and I couldn't really find the list again when I went to look for it one time but it just seemed really, really cool. 
So kind of fell in love with the card, been wanting to use it in a serious way since then. Gisela is a great home for it. It unfortunately just hasn't made too many of my other lists, which super, super sad. Uh, getting caught up on the board, Fever Visions did come in for the Nekusar while I was talking. Here comes K&T for the K&T opponent. I actually do like this so we can get the Marsh Flats out of our hand. I do want to get uh, Misfail Planes into play. And also the Tavern Swindler that we already talked about. We gain another life. So Authority of the Consoles keeping us healthy at the moment. Keeping things tapped out for us. Uh, Risen Reef is really scary. They did play that. That thing does wild stuff. Uh, K&T End Step Trigger, Fevered Visions Trigger. Let's get that Marsh Flats into play. We'll crack the Marsh Flats. Get Misfail Planes. And this will unfortunately put Nekusar and Nekusar mana if they make their land drop. Which, they've got five cards, I assume they will. They do need another colored source, though, so we might be able to get them on that. We'll see what happens. But anyway, yeah, uh, Gisela is a commander that I've been wanting to revisit uh, for my own personal sake for a very long time. Ooh, yeah, that's a Howling Mine. Sweet. Uh, so I guess maybe they didn't have the colored mana. Plays a Myriad Landscape also. Extra card draw for us. I will take it. But yeah, commander that I've been wanting to revisit for a very long time. Um, you know, I think there's kind of three main paths or three sets of options with Gisela. You can go full combat, lots of double strike. Uh, you can go full burn, or you can go Punisher, or you can kind of blend all three of those. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Didn't go so deep on the Punisher. I think Scab Clan is probably one of our few Punisher pieces, but it is a creature that you can put swords on and stuff. Got some equipments in here. I wanted to retain the value that combat Boros decks can generate by being aggressive and attacking. So we have a couple creatures with double strike, get some nice value off of the swords. Uh, and then, of course, there's many burn spells in the deck. So kind of just a nice blend of everything. Um, didn't include some of the most powerful options. If you really want to get wild, you drop in a Burning Earth and Mana Barbs. Uh, we've got both Stuffy Doll cards. Brash Taunter is the new one. You can put Guilty Conscience on those as another way to combo. Uh, so if you're looking to power up a Gisela deck, certainly things that you can do. Um, but I just wanted to see how this deck would perform absent of the combos. Because, like, obviously I know when you land the combo, the game's going to end. So, you know. Didn't need to see that so badly, but I wanted to see what other things might happen. Uh, we draw into a Flamekin Village. That is interesting. So, I mean, we could return to Dust. We could Repercussion. We could Chandra's Ignition, but there's only a couple things in play, and the damage isn't doubled yet, so probably not doing the Chandra's Ignition. Oh, you want it would be crazy? Idyllic Tutor for Smothering Tithe. That would be insane. So if we play our land right now, and then we get... That'll put us on 5. And then if we get a K and T end step trigger, uh, that'll put us on 6. And then if we untap again without getting wheeled, uh, then we can go for the Smothering Tithe. I think that's the plan. So get Flamekin Village. No elementals. Let's get this Repercussion down. I think we can wait on the other stuff. Just kind of set up our nastiness right here. Leave a white open. We'll tack into the Nekusar once again. They are that kind of commander. And we'll pass after the damage goes through. Taking a look at what our opponents are playing today. First up, we have one Patreon supporter, and that would be Kiamlik2, piloting this Villas Broker of Blood deck. Going to tap the old Tavern Swindler, pay three life. If they win the flip, gain six. Didn't look like they won the flip. Uh, opponent says their deck isn't here to go insane. Well, eh, you know, we'll see what happens. I feel like people say that about their Nekusar deck, and then things get crazy. Yeah, opponent did lose that flip, and there's a Fevered Visions. Uh, so this is like double mass burn type commanders with Nekusar and Gisela where just everyone's losing life all at once. And uh, life totals get low really quickly uh, when you have like two of these style decks at the table. Also puts a high value on life gain. Ooh, that's an extra planar lens. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's going to be some mana doubling. Mono black needs and wants that. Especially with the Villas, you got an eight mana commander. Biggest problem with Villas is always just getting it into play and untapping with it and getting all your mana back because it is a lot of mana to get into play. You know, if the game goes on for a little while, it's not too bad, but like early in the game, turn four like this, not the easiest thing to get down. There's a Crypt Gas. That'll make it a lot easier. You know, maybe we have to think about that Chandra's Ignition also. Uh, but we gain more life off of the Authority of the Consoles back to 39. Continuing on our opponents, we have a K&T player at the table today. Fevered Visions and Step Trigger. K&T is one of those decks where I think people are onto it now, but, you know, when it first came out, it was just like, it was very sneaky. You didn't realize how good it was, just like drawing cards and dropping extra lands every turn. And then you're like, wait, why is the K&T deck always winning? And you're just like, oh, they just generate more mana than everyone else. 
no one attacks them because it's a two way and it's just like hard to attack and do a K and T. And then you realize, like, you know, it's turn eight, turn nine, they're at 40 life, they've got a bunch of mana, and they just do whatever they want to do. Like, we attacked Nekusar last turn, I probably should have sent one over to K&T, honestly. Fortunately, other than the extra planar lens, no one's really run away in the early game with ramp. That is a really nice thing. There's a wall of blossoms for the K&T, interesting. Comes in tapped, we gain a life. Authority of the consoles, working exactly as I had planned. Get it down early, gain lots of life, keep your opponent's creatures tapped. It's a little bit less good later on. It's always a tough call between this and Blind Obedience. Um, for this deck, honestly, you could probably run both. I did cut Blind Obedience right at the last second just because I didn't want to spend all day building the deck. I just kind of wanted to run it out there, see how I felt about things, just kind of get those gut reactions to things and then, you know, make some adjustments from there. But, you know, if you're burning everyone's life total out, having uh, Blind Obedience at your disposal, probably a really good idea. Turn everything into a burn spell. Sure, it'll only do it one at a time, but, you know, if opponents are at like one or two, it'll get you there. It'll get you to the finish line. K&T and a Fever Visions trigger. Let's drop in this Arid Mesa. You know, I have to wonder. I've been starting to think about cards like Howling Mine a little bit. Because most other decks will draw cards easier than, like, red and white decks will, do you just run Howling Mine and, like... I have to wonder if it's worth just giving them the card so that you don't run out of cards. Like, if everyone's drawing and you're not, it's really bad, but... If just everyone's drawing, then, you know, at least you can kind of keep pace. And, you know, with this deck, you're going to draw and do a lot of burn, a lot of board wipes, stuff like that. So something to think about, something I need to test a little bit better. Might run, might go for like a Temple Bell instead, just because you can control the draws a teeny bit better. Uh, by the way, opponent did drop down a Cabal Stronghold off that K&T trigger. So it'll be mana positive soon. It's a little bit slower than Cabal Coffers. Um, you know, in the late game, it's obviously very good. In the early game, it's a little awkward, a little slow, but something you got to watch out for, and you definitely just don't want to let it sit there all game. Opponent cracks Myriad Landscape. Sure. Looks like they need some colored mana pretty badly. Gets themselves two blue mana. Yep. Opponent's going to animate dead on... Ooh, an acidic slime. Let's see what they go after. There are plenty of targets. Repercussion, Authority of the Consoles, Extra Planar Lens, Cabal Stronghold. All nasty. All nasty. And fortunately, this is happening not while we have our Smothering Tithe in play. We'll be unhappy if they go for a land, though. Authority of the Consoles trigger. Acidic Slime trigger. Uh, acidic Slime on our Authority of the Consoles. Sadness. Opponent doesn't like our life gain. I'll take that over a land, though. We go to 41. Authority goes down. Crack the Arid Mesa right here. We get Sacred Foundry tapped. Fever Visions and Step trigger. <laughs> it's a Dictate of the Twin Gods. It's a pretty funny card. Uh, Howling Mind Trigger. That's a Sun Home. Let's get Sun Home into play. Play Idyllic Tutor. Uh, opponent's very disappointed that he didn't target the Repercussion. Yeah. Yeah, that's a card that'll make you lose a game. Uh, we're gonna get the Smothering Tithe right here. I know, uh, you know, you wanna go for Fiery Emancipation because it's the new fun card, but in all likelihood we're gonna get Wheeled very soon. And this is the Anti-Wheel card, so... You know, it makes so much sense to go for this. Now, if they have anything at all, they're probably going to have to shoot it. But with the Howling Mine, with the k and I think we'll get at least a couple triggers before that happens. Yeah, let's just keep attacking the Nekusar. We could send one over to the k and T. I'll send one to the k and T. I I mean, they might block. If they double block, they'll take some damage, but I don't know that they would give up a Risen Reef for that. If we can get the five treasures, then I might drop in the Dictate uh, at the end step somewhere. Fevered Visions trigger. There's a Mask of Memory. Uh, lots of group draw on this table. Don't know if we're going to need so much Mask of Memory this game. Uh, I will say that is one awkward thing. Lots of mass draw does make this a little bit awkward for testing just because we're going to be having more cards than we normally would be. Opponent flips that coin again. Looks like they lost that one too, down to 24. <laughs> so there's a Howling Mine. There's a Smothering Tithe. Let's get this party started. First treasure token. There's a Gilded Lotus into the Scab Clan Berserker. Crypt Gas will trigger. I feel like they probably have to take the extorts. They're getting down there on life. They extort. Back to 25. <laughs> you want what's also crazy with Smothering Tithe? Villas. Did I introduce our final opponent? Our final opponent is a Nekusar. I've been talking about them all game. Uh, very interesting commander. Each player draws an additional card. Each player loses one life for each card they draw. So usually wheels dot deck is what you see out of a Nekusar player, and there's some nasty stuff you can do with it. You can put some Infect on there, fire off a wheel, generally watch your opponents die. 
Been one of those arch enemy style commanders for quite a long time. Used to bother me a lot back in the day, but as my own deck building has gotten stronger, as other stronger cards have gotten released, uh, it doesn't bother me nearly as much as it used to. Uh, while I was talking, though, Gilded Lotus into Villas Broker of Blood. Villas on the scene. Uh, Tarnished Citadel can tap for a black mana, uh, but they will want to be very careful with that. That is three damage to them. That's it's pretty serious. <laughs> it's pretty serious. Fever Vision's end step trigger. Villas will draw cards off of that because they lose life, and both of those will trigger Smothering Tide, so two Smothering Tide triggers. I mean, even just doing like Gisela Chandra's Ignition, this. If we get, I mean, if we went like Dictate Gisela Chandra's Ignition, that's probably the game. That's so much damage. Oh, with the repercussion out? Yeah. The repercussion out, that's got to be easily game. We're up to five treasures. We can drop in a Dictate of the Twin Gods if we want to. Though I hope we don't have to spend them all to drop the Dictate. But we'll kind of wait to the last minute before we do anything. You know, Nekusar could have wheels. We'll just kind of want to keep our options open. If there's something we really need to return to dust, we need to think about that as well. Howling Mine triggering more treasures on the way. Seven treasures for us now. There's a Wall of Omens. Yep, that draws another card. You want to know what that does? Makes more treasures. I would like to see a new card. I mean, I know I burned our tutor to get Smothering Tithe, but it's Smothering Tithe against three decks that are drawing cards uncontrollably. So, like, you just have to do that? And yeah, like I was saying earlier, maybe you just throw a Howling Mine and a Temple Bell into this deck and call it a day. Uh, you know, if everyone's going to draw, you've got cool stuff to do, too. As long as you don't run out, run out of cards, then... Seems like it could be manageable. Also, if you're going for Smothering Tithe and giving people draws, not awful. KT and Step Trigger, Fevered Visions and Step Trigger. Up to nine treasures. This will be ten. Uh, there might be more on the way. Uh, we're just going to keep on the ramp. Uh, actually, you know what? We've got so many. The question is, are we going to get wheeled? I can't imagine that we will. I'm going to keep the lands because we have a million treasures right now. Like, normally I wouldn't do this, but what I'm trying to do is dig our way into one of the new cards. Just because I want to look at the new cards. That's that's why we're here. So, you know, normally I would just drop the land. Eh, that's Sinew and Steel. It's a pretty cool card, right? But yeah, normally I would just drop the land because lands are super, super valuable. Uh, and especially given the Nekusar, Howling Mine, Fever Visions type of stuff going on. But yeah, like I said, just trying to find our way into some of the new stuff. Oh, discarded a Sun Titan. It's a pretty good card. There's also an Archaeomancer in there. As far as I can tell, looks like a value deck. Looks like an ETB deck, Mindclaw Shaman. Yeah, that's a real ETB kind of card. So our opponents have a pretty serious problem in this moment, which is that we have 10 treasures and climbing with a bunch of lands and a full hand. Plus, we're going to draw more on our turn. And like the things in our hand are fairly impactful. Double damage, do damage to everything, and some nice equipments, plus some removal. Um, yeah. Our opponents are in trouble, is what that adds up to. There's a Talisman. Get him with the Scab Clan. Well, with it on the stack, I'm going to drop in this Dictate of Erebos, because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> opponents can activate the Tavern Swindler. Yep. They're going to draw that many cards off Villas. Oh, that makes a lot of sense in that deck. Because you can just lose life and then potentially gain it back. That's actually pretty cool. I really like that. Uh, but that does trigger our Smothering Tide a bunch more times. I think they lost that one, too. Did they lose? Have they lost all of them? <laughs> oh, no, it's still in the stack. Still in the stack, sorry. Jumping the gun. Uh, opponent activates Villas. Oh, actually, no. They tap the land for mana. Didn't see what they did with the mana, though. More Smothering Tide triggers. Yep. Oh, opponent finally won the flip on uh, Tavern Swindler, I think. Because they're back to 26. <laughs> Dictate finally lands, and here comes a four damage to the Nekusar. We're also really going to want to think twice about tapping that Talisman. That is also damage. Kami of the Crescent Moon. Oh. Oh, yeah. I hope we catch Fiery Emancipation off the top. That's, that, that would, <laughs> that would just be magical. <laughs> I mean, if you're playing a Gisela deck, is Fiery Emancipation, like, significant overkill? Like, you already have double damage, and, like, double damage is really good. Like, any burn spell is insane with double damage. With triple damage, what? Is the game just over? Like, just any anything that can burn anything or do damage has got to be game-ending at that point, right? I don't know. I haven't resolved one yet, so, uh... 
you know, have an answer to that question, but it's certainly worth asking, like, you know, it's so good, I don't know, I mean, I guess you would run it outside of a Gisela deck if you're running some other red deck that, you know, doesn't have damage doubling in the command zone, then absolutely looks fantastic, but with Gisela, it may actually just be overkill. Uh, not saying don't run it, just saying that, like, you may just not need that much damage multiplication. <laughs> Oh man, we have so many treasures. What have we got? 12 now? Yeah, that's pretty insane. And three open mana amongst our opponents. They can counter one thing. Like, even if they counter Gisela, we could just recast it. That's not a great spot for them to be. Here's a Howling Mind and a Kami Trigger, Hainware Battlements. Here's a Path of Exile. Probably worth blowing up that Villas if the game doesn't just end. Ancient Tomb. Uh, okay. Our mana's good. I don't think we really need Ancient Tomb, so play the Hainware Battlements. Play, do we ham it? I mean, I guess we just try to end it, right? Play Gisela. We could ham it and, like, try to draw. We would draw two extra cards with the mask, but, like, let's get the Sinew and Steel in first, just in case. Sinew and Steel on the Scab Clan, just so it doesn't get blown up by the Chandra's Ignition. Play the Chandra's Ignition. Choose Gisela. I don't think anyone's going to survive this. Haven't actually done the math. Uh, opponent's gonna Ghost Way. That will save them from the Repercussion. Uh, they will lose four life into the Ghost Way, though, and they will definitely die. Oh, man, there's damage replacement effects. I gotta figure out how these work. Okay. So click on, click on the shield to prevent damage to players. Where do I click? Click OK to automatically choose. Okay, I will click OK to automatically choose. <laughs> automatically choose my damage shield. So k &T just goes down to the initial Chandra's Ignition. There's a bunch of repercussion triggers on the stack, and... A, oh, yeah, opponents are so dead. Uh, and then there's a million Smothering Tithe treasures on the stack. I'm not even sure why, actually. Oh, because of all the life lost to Villas. Yep. Yep, that, uh, that checks out. Oh my god, there's 20 damage on these repercussion triggers? We're not gonna die ourselves, are we? No, all the damage to Scab was prevented. Gisela does no damage to itself. Okay, cool. Actually, we're at 36. Chandra's Ignition's already resolved. Okay, yeah, I think we're in the clear. Opponent scoops, yeah, that's fair. That is totally fair. Uh, you know, hope we survive these repercussion triggers. We did. Oh my god, it goes to negative 74. Oh, uh, that was ridiculous. And he drew, drew a million cards. Yeah, yeah, that will happen against the burn deck. Uh, well, that was some silliness. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any of the new cards. I'm probably going to have to run this back at some point. I don't know when I'll have time to do that. But, yeah, the deck played well, although uh, opponents had... There were a lot of mass draw effects. Howling Mine, Fevered Vision, and K&T and are... That's a lot of extra cards to be getting every turn. So, you know, maybe... I don't know how well this deck's going to draw just on its own. Like, we probably would have run thin on cards had we not had that stuff in play. So, question is, maybe you just throw like a Howling Mine or a Temple Bell into this deck because you just don't care that much. It's certainly worth testing out. But the second you give this deck Mana Ramp and Card Draw, eh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Double damage is really, really strong. Quadruple damage is even stronger than that. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this Gisela video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and ring the bell notification to be notified of new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. The 2020 GoFundMe is active. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one deck reviews with me or get one of your decks played on video, be sure to check out the link in the description below. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have a few new Patreon supporters in Troy McAndrew and Septred Basuwodo. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.